So today we're going to work with two different plugins, Knoll Light Factory and Nick Software again and we're going to create an epic cool colory picture with a flea in it and some font. And yeah, enough of the talking, let's do the tutorial. Okay, so I've imported my image already into Photoshop. As you guys can see over here we have layer 1. We can just rename that to layer 1. First of all, I've just taken this to Camera Raw, did a few adjustments here, nothing special. And now in Photoshop I'm going to do my first adjustments. So basically what I want to do is put this to a grayscale or basically meaning I want to darken this image and make this into a black and white. So first step, I'm going to take my adjustments over here and just do that now with the hue and saturation adjustment layer. First of all, I'm going to just take the saturations all the way down, so it's kind of black and white already. Not the best way to do it, but for this tutorial it will do. Okay, so saturation all the way down. It looks a bit flat, so I'm going to take the lightness as well down just a little bit here, just to push those blacks a little bit, a little bit more. The contrast over here. Okay, so maybe minus 14, that looks good for me. I'm just not too happy with the arms here, so I'm going to do something else, another adjustment layer with just the curves. So I, I can either now on the mask here brush away his arms, which I actually don't want to do, I want to keep the contrast here in the tattoos. So creating a new adjustment layer here, a curves adjustment layer. And in the RGB channel, I'm also just going to push the highlights a little bit. So up here on the right hand side, I'm just going to make a dot and push my highlights just a little bit up. So somewhere over this. Okay, let's also move down so you guys can actually see my numbers down here. And then as well, so it's going to be input 202 and output 216. Then as well, I'm going to go down here and just push the contrast again a little bit down, not too much, so it's not that flat. And again to 68 input and output 75. Okay, so on this adjustment layer here from those curves, I'm going to take my brush as well but first of all, before we do that, I'm going to invert that with Command I. So turning that into black side art again. So it's a black hidden mask now. And now with B with the brush, 100% opacity. I'm also going to press Control Alt again to just feather this almost completely, say to 80%. Okay, and also going to make the opacity a little bit smaller. But I'm actually going to make it up a little bit further. So maybe say 50% hardness. I'm working with the Vacuum Continuous 5 tablet, so if you don't have it, I'm able to change my brush size really quickly here via my wheel. If you don't have that, please go up here to the top and just select your hardness and brush size as well. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Press X again for white foreground color, so we're painting obviously on a hidden mask. And now what I'm doing is just brushing the highlights in here a little bit, just on the arm, so we do have a little bit of exposure there. Yeah, I'm just giving it a bit of a pop in there, also in his face a little bit. Okay, but still keeping his hairs and all the blacks quite dark, so we have a bit of more contrast here on that. Okay, so I think in Camera Raw you can actually also achieve this already, getting a really nice popping highlighty image with having some nice contrast in there. But I wanted to show you guys this in Photoshop today. Okay, a little bit more. I actually want to get rid of this halo here on the side. Just bear in mind, once I brush that out, you will get a bit of halo here. So I'm just going to black foreground color and brush that back again. As you guys can see, over here it doesn't look that bad. But here at the top as well, and around his face, and here. Okay, there you guys can see it also. A little bit of halos. Okay, so we just brush that over here. As you guys can also see now the mask over here. So again, turning that off and on. And we can actually duplicate this and have a look how strong that will get. It's a bit too intense, so let's take our second duplicated layer here. I just duplicated it with Command J. I'm going to write here 2 as well. And take that opacity just down to say maybe 50%. Okay, and switch that on and off again. And as you guys can see, that pop isn't that hard yet, but it still looks nice. Okay, so that was the pop for that. Next step that I'm going to do as well now just make this a little bit bigger over here. I'm going to take this layer and make a master shortcut again. So I'm going to merge everything together to Command Alt Shift E so we have one final layer. And the reason for that is also because I'm going to take it now into a plugin and add a really cool color effect. Like I said earlier, it's a pretty uh, actually a pity that we need two plugins for this. Um, yeah, but the effect is pretty cool and it's very quick working with these plugins. So I'm going to write main now over here, so that's my new main layer, and take this layer into filter over here, and we're going to go all the way down to Nick Software Color FX Pro 4. 
Okay, so the ColorFX Pro 4 plugin, Nick Software, has opened. And first of all, what we're going to do here is switch our filters to all, and we're going to have a look for ink. So the preset ink over here on the left hand side, we have found it, there we go, ink, and directly I can see that this is not the right adjustment. So I'm going to go to my color set over here on the right hand side, and we're going to select a new color palette. So overall, as you guys can see, a few color palettes, and this one, number five, is the one we're looking for. So selecting number five, and that looks quite strong already, so I'm not going to go and work with 80%, maybe just take this down a little bit. So we're still keeping this nice contrast, as you guys can see here. So maybe at 50%, that's good enough. I can accept it as 50% and then always obviously go back in the opacity here from my layer and tweak that again. Let's also just play a little bit with our highlights here and see if we take the highlights down a little bit, how much that will affect our image. I think highlighting up also at 30% or maybe even 20%, that will be good enough. And my shadows, I don't want to tweak that, but let's give it a push. Yep, obviously it will be just very flat then. Losing that contrast again, so I'm going to keep it at 0% so we have some nice hard contrast in here. Okay, so that's pretty much all the adjustments that I already do in Nick software. So just a really cool, simple color set here, a color grade. And I'm going to set OK again, and that will be adjusted to our image. So as you guys can see also, Photoshop is rendering a new layer here with that plugin for us already. So we have everything on a new layer. We can actually now delete our main layer again once the pre-processing from this image is done. Let's wait quickly. Okay, so that is done. And I can also now delete the main layer again. So over here, main layer, just press backspace. So we save a little bit on memory here. And we have this new layer over all now. Now again, what I want to do is also duplicate this layer because I'm going to add another flare on top of this to get this really cool sun flare effect on here. And the reason why I'm also duplicating this is because I'm going to make the flare a little bit stronger and then here on my layers palette also just degrade or take the opacity just down a little bit. So I'm going to press Command J again, duplicate this, and I'm going to write here flare. Okay, I'm going to go to filter, and this filter is called Red Giant Software Knoll Light Factory. Okay, that is opening for us, and as you guys can see, there we have already our filter. So on the left-hand side, under presets as well, again, I'm going to go all the way down to a really cool preset. Over here, we have the Sunny D, which is pretty cool. So as you guys can see already, there we have our flare. At the bottom again, we can adjust the flare on it overall, and on the right-hand side, we can adjust a few things just here from the flare. So as you guys can see, I've turned off a few things already. First of all, I want to get rid of just this poly spread here. So I want to turn that off. And the disc as well. I don't want to have the disc in here. As you guys can see, this little tiny disc over there. I want to remove that. And obviously, I just want to have the global. Okay, so I've got the global now. And let's also work a little bit with the brightness down here. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter so we get this really cool orange ring around here and the fire in the center. And as well, the scale, I can also still scale this up and down. But for now, I just want to move it over here. And I obviously want to get rid of the flare a little bit. So just putting it on the side and then making it really big. So it looks like a really glowing orange ball here from the side. Okay, and also my scale up a little bit. Don't want to make it too yellowy or orangey. Okay, moving it a little bit again over. So it's out of the frame already. Let's move it a little bit over here. A little closer again. Okay, now I don't want to make it too overpowering, maybe just over here. Okay, somewhere over there, and I'm pretty happy now with this kind of effect, so a bit more on the hand. And obviously, a lot of text will still go here on the left-hand side. So I'm going to hit OK again. It's a bit stronger now. Okay, so as you guys can see, now we have this new flare effect right on top of that. And we can now still go down to our opacity and tweak this a little bit down if you think this is still a little bit too strong. So at the moment, but I'm pretty happy actually, I'm going to keep it maybe at 95%, pretty happy with this glow. Next step that I still want to do is add a bit of text. So at the bottom, you guys get to see already here two text fonts. So let me show you guys that quickly. I've done these previously. I'm going to move them all the way to the top to just show you guys what I'm still going to add on top. So obviously it's just here, aka the artist's name and his album cover is called Worldwide. So that's why we rename it to aka Worldwide. Okay, so let's turn off both of these and I'll show you guys quickly how to do that as well. So I'm going to go back here to my text tool on the left hand side, select your text tool. First of all, I'm going to just make a random selection around here and write his name, aka. 
which you guys can already see it's on a different font so I'm gonna actually yeah keep it to aka select all of it with command A and then we are also gonna go here up to our text types and I'm gonna search for the first text name font name and which is Bebas, Bebas Neuer. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to select that. As you guys can see already, we have selected that. I'm going to still go up, up to the top and change the color to pure white. Okay, and also scale this a little bit bigger. Okay, a little bit more, maybe somewhere around this, so it's nice and big. His name, accept that from the top. Okay, and now with the move tool again, I'm just going to move this normal layer all the way down here some way. So I thought maybe down here that looks pretty cool having his name over here. And then as well, we're going to put T again for our text tool again, or go to over here. And then we're going to make another selection again, and this album was called Worldwide. So I'm going to write that in capital letters. Okay, select all of that with Command A. We're going to select the right font type which is again something with C color, color of autumn. Okay, select that and that looks very creative and cartoonish in a way or very scrungy. Let's make this a bit smaller, aka worldwide. Okay, let's have a look. The color isn't yet perfect, so I thought maybe a quite grayish color looked quite good. Let's take a half dark grayish color so it stands out really nicely. Okay, something around this, maybe even a little bit darker. So let's select it again, and we're just going to make it a little bit darker, okay, and accept it as well here from the top. Okay, I'm going to select the Move tool again, just move this all the way down, and it's still on top of the AKA uh, font here, so I'm going to move this layer one step down, so we have AKA and Worldwide underneath. Okay, but it's still not looking that cool. Last step that I'm still going to do is press Command T, rotate this again, just a little bit, so it's just a bit skew. Again, Command T, just getting to the rotate move. Onto the anchor point here, rotating that a bit. Accept that from the top. Then back to the V move tool and a little bit over. And I think it will even look cool if it's still on top. So I'm going to move it back to the top. Just a little bit over. Okay, and there we go already. There we have it, aka worldwide. And we have the simple color effect right on top. So let's also switch both off. Let's have a look at the old ones. They were a little bit smaller over here, again, compared to our new ones. So again, maybe both changing a bit. Okay, well, AKA, select it again with T. So I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, this is obviously your personal taste as well, how you want to do it. Okay, and worldwide, again, selecting the right layer. Press T again for the text tool. Then select all, command A, or go over with your mouse, select all, and we're going to make it just a little bit smaller. Maybe to just 90%, 91. Okay, select that, accept it. V tool, we can move it just a little bit around. Okay, with the cursors left and right, just a little bit. And I'm pretty happy so far with this. Okay, so there we go, have our last effect. Now, last step that you can still do. Press Command, Alt, Shift, E, Master Shortcut again, and you've merged all layers together to one final layer. Now, last step, if you still think the pop, you still want to give it a bit more pop, again to adjustments, back to curves again, another curves adjustment layer. And let's open this a little bigger here. And you can still tweak just the pops a little bit, take the contrast down a little bit again, and that will even give it another nice pop. So just the highlights pop a little bit more. Take your contrast just down a little bit. There's also a lot of green in here now. So just an awesome little effect just with a few adjustment layers and these two plugins. So again, like I said, a pity that you need two plugins for this. Okay, yeah, so that's basically all. Last step that you can still do is maybe take all of these layers. I'm going to take all my text layers and my last layers, put that in a group right here, text. Just open that again and we'll take out our last layers here, move them to the top. Okay, and you obviously got our first stage here, which we can also then rename again to maybe f basic retouch or basic effect. Okay, so there you got your PSD file sorted as well, and you got this quick and easy file. So simply just from a normal image like this, black and white, to a awesome looking color effect with some text. 
All right, yeah, so that's basically all for today's Photoshop tutorial, guys. Do let me know in the comments down below what you think about this process. And if you have some wishes for some new Photoshop tutorials, do leave them in the comments down below as well. Then as well, hit us up with a like, support us, subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.